marathon, and now it is time for the sprint. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Ohio Expo Center in Columbus, Ohio, for our continuing live coverage of the 2013 Central East Regional Competition. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Bill Grundler, the fourth and final heat of Event 5. 21-15-9, heavy deadlifts and box jumps. You know what? Heavy hitters coming in here. I'm expecting to see some quick, quick workouts through here. Rory McKernan is on the competition floor, and he's with CrossFit Games director Dave Castro. Thanks, Sean. Hey, Dave, an amazing male competition that we're facing here. What do you expect to see in this event? Well, today I'm really excited about seeing Dan Bailey go after this workout. In 2011, he did this workout in 304, and what a lot of people don't realize is that's the second fastest time of the year. I want to see if two years later he can best that time and go sub three. You know, the fastest time this year is by Austin Maliolo at 317. I expect to see that go down. And uh, Rich and Graham didn't have to do this in 2011, so we'll see what they're, what they're capable of doing today. They also didn't have to deal with the 100 watt two years ago, but it'll be exciting. It'll be fast. Keep your eyes on it. It'll be cool. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Sean, back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Roy. If Dan Bailey gets a win here, it will be the first of the competition. He'll have to beat that man to do it. Let's go down to Miranda Olroyd for the introductions. In lane 12, from CrossFit Fort Wayne, in 12th place, Kaylee Hetrick. In lane one, from CrossFit Faith, currently in 11th place, Matt Hewitt. In lane 11 from Derby City CrossFit, currently in 10th place, Patrick O'Connell. In lane 2 from CrossFit Talon, currently in 9th place, Will Morad. In lane 10, CrossFit Games veteran from CrossFit Polaris, in 8th place, Marcus Hendrick. In lane three from CrossFit Cadre, another Games veteran, currently in seventh place, Joe Weigel. In lane nine from Mad City CrossFit, currently ranked number six, Nick Forey. In lane four from CrossFit Countdown, currently in fifth place, Gerald Sasser. In lane eight, from CrossFit Grand View, your 2010 Games Champion. In fourth place, Graham Holmberg. In lane five, from CrossFit Mayhem, another Games veteran. Currently in third place, Dan Bailey. In lane seven, from CrossFit Distinction, currently in second place, Scott Petchik. And in lane six from CrossFit Mayhem, the 2011-2012 champ, currently in first place, Rich Froning. Rich Froning looking for another event record. He will occupy lane six. Next to him in second place overall is Scott Panjic and Dan Bailey sits in third. Graham Holmberg, Gerald Sasser, and Nick Forey all battling for that third and final spot. The time to beat, 342.6. That belongs to Ken Battison. The event record, 319 by Austin Maliolo. Three, two, one, go. Fourth and final heat, our last event of the day. 21-15-9, deadlifts at 315 pounds and box jumps. And Rich Froning, who has back-to-back -back event records, has his sights on another. You know, my, what, my, what my sights are right now is on Dan Bailey. The Bailey, Holberg, and Hendren, the first men done with their set to 21. Now Froning is done, Scott Panchik is done, and they will start on their set of 21 box jumps. The last time we had a sprint, it was the first event, it was Jackie, and Bailey did beat Froning. Now granted, it was about three tenths of a second, but he still bested the champ in that event. The world record, and you gotta talk about it, when Rich Froning is in the field, three minutes, 19 seconds by Austin Moliolo. He did that in week one. You know, 
Dan Bailey knows exactly what he has to do. And on the event where he has a shot to really make it count, this is going to be it. He has to, he has to do his work right now. Whether it hurts or not, it doesn't matter. He has to do this. And he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. But here we come into that most painful round. Marcus Hendren also on his set of 15. Marcus Hendren needs to do some work here and get some help. Hendren has 37 points. That puts him 20 points out of a qualifying spot. That final spot currently occupied by the man on the far left of your screen, Dan Bailey. He has 17 points coming in to event number five. And it's Hendren who is just slightly ahead of Bailey, but Bailey continuing to keep a fast pace on the deadlift, but now he's resting. Hendren continuing to work. I am shocked that Dan put the bar down. Bailey back on the bar. He's through 11. Now Hendren's done. So Marcus Hendren really needs a win here, and he is currently in the lead. Stumbling on that box jump, that will not count. He's got to get all the way up on top there. You know, that gave Dan a little bit of a window. But, wow, Marcus is just doing great. He's making sure those count, getting back up on that box quickly. Dan Bailey oh. caught that one, but it will not count. So Marcus Hendren continuing to work steadily here and is now through nine reps on his set of 15. The time to feed is three minutes, 42.6 seconds. Rich Browning next to Dan Bailey on his set of 15 box jumps. He is currently in third place ahead of Graham Holmberg. Holmberg came in in fourth place overall. One point back of Dan Bailey. And now Marcus Hendren back for his final set of nine deadlifts. Dan Bailey is done. He's back for his final set. But Marcus Hendren really needs a victory here. He needs this one. He, he has to go as unbroken as he possibly can. He's looking strong. He's moving that barbell well. Hendren one to go. The event record is 319. That will probably be safe. But today's time to beat 342.6 is not. Marcus Hendren has a victory in his sights as Dan Bailey begins to slow. And now Rich Froning has tied Bailey. And Graham Holmberg now making up some ground as well. Marcus Hendren. One more rep for him. He is done. And Marcus Hendren will pick up his first victory of the Central East Cup. Unofficially a time of 335.8, and now the battle for second place between Rich Broding on the right and Dan Bailey on your left. Bailey struggling to get on the box jumps. He catches his balance, and that will count. So one more for Bailey. Broding is in. Broding will finish in second in the heat. Bailey is in. He will get third. But second overall will belong to Ken Madison, whose time of 342.6, only bested by one man, it's Marcus Hendren. Now Graham Holmberg, who came in in fourth place overall with 18 points, trying to catch Dan Bailey. He needs to get in as fast as he can, and he is in four minutes, 19 seconds unofficially. Scott Panchik came in in second place overall with 14 points, and now he is falling back. Panchik done. Final time of 4.32. There's a lot of movement going on here with all these athletes and where they're going. But again, this was that volume we were talking about. How did that affect them going into here? I expected to see some lot, a lot lower numbers from those top athletes. But look at what happened. Some of them look absolutely destroyed. Matt Hewitt is in. Joseph Weigel finished up as well. And now we have three athletes left on the floor. Will Morad. Patrick O'Connell, and then in lane number 12, it's Caleb Hetrick out of CrossFit Fort Wayne. That's Patrick O'Connell, comes in from Derby City CrossFit. He's out of Louisville, Kentucky. Again, look at where these athletes are compared to some of our top athletes. You get these guys that are really, they're gunning for it. They want to be in the big show. They are emptying the tank on these workouts prior to this, trying to do the same thing here, but guess what? You run into a wall, and that's exactly what's happening here. I mean, they physically can't move, can't jump nearly what they're normally capable of doing. And a lot of that has to do with what happened in event four, absolutely, Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're talking about. The amount of volume that these guys are undertaking up to this point has been incredible. The fact that they're hanging on is obviously a true testament to them, but you can see the damage that it's doing. They're doing one rep at a time, and that's not the normal for these athletes at all.
Patrick O'Connell on the left in the red. Caleb Hedrick on the right trying to get in inside the eight minute time cap here. Marcus Hendren in the blue shirt on the left of your screen. He is the man who won this event with a time of 3.35 and he absolutely needed that win as he came in with 37 points. He was in eighth place and the good news for him is he beat everybody in front of him. So he's going to have some ground still to make up, but helping his cause with that victory. That was a giant, a giant feather in his cap for sure. He needed that. He did exactly what he needed to do. Next to him is Graham Holmberg. Graham finished fourth in this heat with a time of 4.19. Former champion came in in fourth place overall. We'll have to see if he stays there once we get the official results after five events. Approaching the seven minute mark, one minute to go before we hit the eight minute time cap. We've seen a lot of that on those box jumps. You know, it, it, one of the worries that people have with box jumps is that, you know, cranking their shins on the corner there. You don't like to see it, but it, it's just one of those things that happens. You have to, you know, stay controlled, stay contained. Now here's one of the best things about CrossFit. You see fellow competitors staying on the floor to cheer on the men that they're competing against. And Rich Froning always goes to every athlete out there. And he said, it's like, I was in this position once. I know what it feels like. And that's why he tries to help people out. And he's urging the fans on to help count down Caleb Hetrick. You know, not only being the champ, I mean, and obviously great ambassador for the sport. He's firing everybody up. Wow. I think Dan Bailey just grew some hair. So Dan Bailey donning the mullet <laughs> wig that he wore in the Broflex commercial that many of you have seen on the website. Very popular. Bailey, a good sport to do that. Rich Froning cheering on Caleb Hedrick. Trying to encourage him to get just one more rep. Five seconds to go before we hit the time cap. And Hedrick's going to give it a go. And he's unable to lock it out but made the attempt regardless and now getting congratulations from his fellow competitors but it's marcus hendren winning this event a time of 335.8 rich froning must not be feeling too well he finished second and then dan bailey in third place so the event record is safe 319 still by Austin Maliolo, but Dan Bailey started out very well, but then ran into some trouble here. You know, I, again, I think it was the combination of the, the whole weekend up to this point. He was a minute off his time from two years ago. We know he's fit, but that, was just, that just crushed him. And as always, Rich Froning, methodical. He, he doesn't need to win every single event. He will be in the top of every single event, and that's what's always been his key to victory, every whether it's the games or the regionals. And then it was Marcus Hendren, who, like Bailey, started off very quickly, but then kept that pace. Yeah, he didn't slow down at all. I mean, he was mechanically talked about that word, and he did exactly what he needed to get himself back in there. Let's go down to Emily Turner, who's standing by with Marcus Hendren. Hey guys, all right, Marcus Hendren here, the winner of this box, box jump deadlift event. You needed this. How badly did you need this? Oh, really bad. I've been middle of the pack, well, not middle of the pack, but flirting around 10 on every single workout. I was sitting in eighth, going into that one down 17 points from fifth place. I, I can't tell you how bad I needed that one. I didn't think I was going to win it going into it either. I just, before I stepped up to that bar when the 3 2 1 went off, I decided I wasn't going to put that bar down. And I just stuck with that the whole time. Well, I mean, it obviously won you this event. So here we are, the end of day two. There is still a day left, but this is such a highly contested region. What do you need to do to make sure you're on the leaderboard at the end of tomorrow? Something like that. I probably need to be top three, top five in the next two events if I have any shot at going to California this year. So get some rest. Be ready to go tomorrow morning. Fantastic. Well, good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Emily. Marcus Hendren picking up his first win of the competition. Ken Battison will finish in second. And it's Rich Froning, another top five finish for the defending champ. And Dan Bailey in fourth place. Overall, after five events, Froning is still in first. It's now Dan Bailey in second, Scott Panchik in third. But still, a lot of men in contention heading into our final two events. Last thing I can say for these guys is rest up, boys, because tomorrow we got one more big day. Take care of yourself tonight. Bring, it, bring in the heat tomorrow. Let one last day to throw it down. And no cuts. The entire field will go through the final two events, which means that that leaderboard can shake up quite a bit. Five down, two more to go. We will have live coverage continuing tomorrow from the Central East Regional as two-time defending champion Rich Froning and Dan Bailey battle it out with the rest of the field. For Bill Grundler, I'm Sean Woodland. We'll see you on Sunday.